The best part of math is finding and solving mysteries. I think most of us want to know the process by which people find mysteries and how they solve those mysteries. What I want to do is to broadcast live coverage of a search for a solution. How to pursue that problem, which can be called a mystery, and how to solve that mystery. Most books simply prove how mysteries are solved. They call mysteries and solving mysteries theory. They explain these mysteries in a logical manner. In other words, books tend to write about the best way to demonstrate theorems discovered hundreds of years ago based on the wisdom of many minds. But it's almost impossible for such a wonderful way of proving something to be found so easily. The goal of my book was thus to show readers even you can become a mathematician starting today. I believe that ambitious and enthusiastic people will go and search for problems and solve them one way or another. This book addresses the trial and error involved in the process. This can be quite frustrating and rough, but I felt that it's important to describe this aspect. Treks into Intuitive Geometry is an interactive book focusing on dialogues between teacher and student. Through these dialogues, students, the young or beginners, can share their initial doubts with their professor. The book also shows how professors usually struggle to explain something difficult in a clear-cut manner and to visualize it. This book also discusses trial and error, where one starts with the wrong concept, then goes back to square one and starts over again with a different method. This book discusses such issues. There's basically no other book like it. The book covers both the aspect of finding problems and the results of solving the problems in a lively way. For instance, Chapter 2 talks about a theorem which I call the Sharkhead Theorem. For some reason, the shark head is a regular tetrahedron in math. When you split this and unfold it, it becomes a rectangle. When you cut this all at once, it becomes a rectangle. So what about a regular triangle? Triangles are simple. By cutting along the three sides meeting at a vertex, you get a regular triangle. Normally, we cut along the side, but you can also cut the face. So you might be wondering if you can do the same with pentagons. You can't with regular pentagons or regular hexagons, but you probably can with non-regular pentagons and hexagons. Actually, you can do the same for the house-shaped pentagons and parallelohexagons. Let's look at things from a different angle here. If this rectangle is a tile, the tiles are laid out like this, making sure there are no gaps. Now, what about this pentagon? Mathematically speaking, if there are sufficiently many congruent tiles, this also tiles the plane. If you cut and unfold a regular tetrahedron, you get variously shaped unfoldings. Stunningly, all of them can tile the plane. You might ask, can we really cut it any way we like? Yes, you can. Because this is a tetrahedron, when the scissors reach the four vertices, it opens up flatly. I've intentionally cut it in a strange way. This is to emphasize that it can be cut anyway. It has now become flat. The shape is like this. When I made this tetrahedron, I piled five sheets of origami paper over each other and was able to create five identical shapes. When you take a look at this, what comes to mind? This is just like a jigsaw puzzle. When you fit this depression to the yellow protrusion, so, when all the parts are fit together, it looks like this. If you continue doing this and you have many tiles or pieces, they start to expand. So, let's make it into a theorem. No matter how you unfold a tetrahedron, it becomes a jigsaw puzzle. Whatever shape you unfold, it becomes tiles.
There is another thing that I cut. Everyone knows this shape very well. It turns into a donkey. When we combine the tiling theorem of a tetrahedron with the reversibility theorem, something marvelous happens. This is the donkey. You can cut the tetrahedron into a donkey or a fox, if you do it cleverly. By doing so, the donkey transforms into a fox. That's the theorem I created. Take a close look at how the donkey is disguised as a fox and vice versa. See, it's a donkey and now it's a fox. It's a fox or oh, it's a donkey. This is indeed the fascinating thing about math, how things can expand and develop like this, like space. It's like reading and solving a mystery novel. I wanted it to be a book that entices readers, makes them feel excited and wonder what's next. I did my best to make it a mystery.